Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jade and this is How to App on iOS. And today, this is the first episode of The Creator Interview Rewind. Where we go back in time to bring somebody back to the future who I previously interviewed and today's guest is Ron Ward. And we're going to open up with this song called The Turks T-Shirt. I got a Tux T-Shirt, I'm tucking it in. And I got a Tux T-Shirt from the dollar bin. And I got a Tux T-Shirt, it's ugly as sin. I got a Tux T-Shirt, it's helping me win. Tux T-Shirt. A tux t-shirt goes with anything I wear it to the club under my bling I wear it in my house, I wear it in my car I smoke my tux t-shirt like a fine cigar Tux t-shirt Tux t-shirt to me once, you could give it to me twice, put on a wet tux t-shirt and make it feel nice. Oh. You could give it to me once, you could give it to me twice, put on a wet tux t-shirt and make it feel nice. I'm not worried about conspiracies Don't care if Big Brother is watching me I'm gonna knock him on the head with reality I got a tough tux t-shirt that's keeping me free the show my name is jade that was ron ward with tuck's t-shirt i know it's a favorite amongst the community it's a favorite of mine i've sung that song many times on my performances here on the channel it came out of the blue and uh, uh, everybody loves a good tuck's t-shirt don't they do you own a tuck's t-shirt do you wear it often burning questions that we will have answered today with the brilliant ron ward so yes what is this show about well, I got to thinking, 
because I'm all, I know I do think actually um, I like to keep the show growing and evolving over time and trying to have interesting things happen. And we've done like 120 odd, 120, 627 interviews here on the channel. And you know what? Uh, people change, yeah, over time. Things happen. So I thought what a cool idea maybe to go back in time and meet the people again who I've interviewed back three years ago and see what's changed, you know, because we we hear their backstory, but we never really follow up. So that's what this is about. And I can't give you an exact, will they be one of these each month, but they will be a continuous thing that pops up uh, coming up by the end of 2023 and going into 2024. So hopefully you enjoy this kind of content because it can't happen unless I have a fantastic sponsor by the name of Distro Kid. I love you, Distro Kid. Because today's episode is sponsored by Distro Kid. So, yes, indeed. Distro Kid have been sponsoring this uh, these shows for a damn long time now, and I'm so, so thankful for it. I couldn't really keep doing this stuff without DistroKid and I wouldn't be able to release so much music because I have released a crap ton of music and I know many of you have released music and if you haven't, well, now's the time to start thinking about it because DistroKid offers you three stunning plans to be able to release your music. There is, we kick off with the musician plan right over here and I love this little breakdown now. It's, it's much cooler than the old way. Uh, so for... $22.99 annually, you can release as many songs, albums, EPs as you like under one artist's name. And that's a bone, that's a deal. You get a Spotify check mark. Look, you get royalty splits. Uh, you get 21 free tools to, to promote yourself, iPhone app access, synced lyrics, lots of cool stuff for that really, really simple, simple price. Plus, there are two other plans here. You can see $39.99 where you get two artists and a few extra little things down here like custom iTunes pricing. You want to name it, price your songs yourself, custom release dates, label name for your, your, little, L, uh, your little band label. So that is for $39.99. Or you can go with what I have, and that is the ultimate plan. Uh, which is $89.99 a year. And you get a whole, what are the extra things down here? A terabyte of instant file sharing. RIA gold and platinum monitoring contact info of, of thousands of playlists. So I didn't even know those things were available to me. So I just learned something new myself. But if you sign up to DistroKid and use my code that's just over there, see in the corner, distrokid.com slash VIP slash Jade Star and Thomas Christ, the amazing moderator that everybody dreams they could have has just posted the link to there. So you'll get 7% off your first year if you use my promo code. We will come back and talk a little bit more about DistroKid a little bit further on in the show. But let's oge and get into bringing on our guest today. I will say hello to you all very soon. But before that, remember, as always, I love you. I love you. Okay, now that moment's over with me and Distro Kid. Let's get back to it. I'll say hello to you all very soon. Thanks, everyone, for being here. But we'd like to get into the interview and then I'll do a call back and call your names out as we always do here on the show. All right, so as I said at the beginning of the show, this guy came on the channel, second interview, second interview way back when. Um, he was episode number 13. And um, so much has changed in this man's life, yet so much is still the same. And that's cool. And we're going to find out what has gone on. He is a singer, musician, composer uh, for multiple acts, which include uh, uh, the, the Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard, Strange Machine. He's also a host of a, of a really popular show on YouTube called Homegrown Indie Live. He used to have a show on Facebook way back in the day called Garage Band Users Weekly. Is that what it's called? GBU Live. And he's an amazing uh, friend and a really funny guy all around. 
So, and he's quite partial to wigs, if you didn't know already. But let's bring him on without further ado, because it's very early where he is in Saigon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, <laughs> the incomparable, Ron Ward. Welcome, Ron, to the show. Good to be here, Jay. Good to see everyone. <laughs> Sounds so, so formal. Who are all those people that I hear clapping? Oh, you have an app. Oh, have, I have an audience. I know I have an audience that I take everywhere with me. Oh, well, I was going to tell you, your your room is smoky back there. <laughs> Either you got a fire or I don't know. So you're using a green screen. So what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's early here. I'm sorry. It's four freaking a.m. I know. Thank you so much for doing this run and getting up so it's early. Cool. And I love out. it. This, this is a great concept, Jade. Um, no, I haven't done and it yet. I think people will be interested in being involved with it because things do change, you know, uh, as you uh, get into your creative pursuit of, uh, you know, using the canvases available to you to make art and ours is music, you know, in this community. And may I just say that when Jade interviewed me back on the second show, I was the second interview, but there were only two people in the community. So there wasn't much of a choice. It was that long ago. It was that long I know. ago. It's almost four years ago that you talk came about on. back in the day. I know. Back in the day. <laughs> well, so I had Pete. Um, Pete was the first interview, and you, mm. you were the second interview. And mm. um, so, all right, Ron. Let, let's let's cut to the chase. So, mm. if, now uh, there's a term in the corporate world called the elevator pitch. And if you're not aware of it in the chat, the elevator pitch is if uh, you are working at your corporate job and one day you jump into an elevator and the CEO's in the elevator with you, how are you going to, what What are you going to say to pitch who you are in a very short space of time? So Ron Ward, I would like for you on the spot to give me the Ron Ward elevator pitch right now. Okay. Well... I've been around the world. I've been down in the deep blue sea. I've been up in the air, you see, as an airman. I've been in the U.S., in the 50 states. I've been in Asia, if you can relate. For most of my life, if it be told, I've been calling Saigon my hold. And now... Here I am making music after, you know, about 38 years of gaining experience. And if you would just let me make some videos and audio tracks for you, we'll both be famous. That's my spiel, man. <laughs> what and what was your name, sir? <laughs> Oh, you're the, you know, oh, you're the you're the office manager. Jesus, you're the admin guy. He's the CEO. I was just practicing. Right. Um, Jay, uh, well, you asked me, Ron, what are you doing over there on your that other freaking channel of your strange machine? I, I'm practicing. I don't think you've got a job anymore. <laughs> you know the what the devil in the deep blue sea thing didn't work for you. I was going to put. Well, a, then you, you, this is obviously not the place I want to work. <laughs> I was going to put a, a beat behind it. I'm like, is he breaking into a rap? You should have. Well, I was going to. You should have. Not, not, you know, maybe I would have written another Tux T-shirt. Tom, <clears throat> Thomas Christ has written, but I'm the janitor, sir. Well, they made it. He, he had a freaking tie on. <laughs> I was wondering why I had the bucket. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we all now we've all had a catch up. We know exactly everything about Ron. <laughs> where he's Jade, <laughs> Jade Shaw thought she was going to catch me with that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, so, we, because we've we've streamed a lot together before. We should let people know. Maybe people who are watching. <clears throat> well, this is this is my next bullet point, Ron. It says here on my bullet points. Which yes. is the new segment I have called? Okay, 
because I've got a song called Me and My Brain, which uh, people know fairly well, and this mm. segment's called Me and My Ron. Okay. So, <laughs> right on. So how do we know each other? How do we come across each other? Well, we met in the uh, Garage Band Users Group in about, in 2018, I'd say. Uh, I think it was earlier because, than that. I think it was earlier than that. Well, because I was in, I came to Saigon in the 2018, and we built this house, so it had to be about, I'm thinking, just guessing, but you know, sometimes my memory gets a little hazy. Well, <laughs> hazy is the back of the back of your room back there, so how to, don't ask me these, don't ask me time questions, but anyhow, it was in the GarageBand users group, yeah. and um, I was a moderator, working for Pete John in uh, the GBU Live Facebook group. And Pete ha had, like, the first live stream show ever that I knew of. Yep. Streaming streaming into Facebook called Facebook uh, Garage Band Weekly. Excuse me, Garage Band Weekly, and, uh, which still continues. That exact show, you know, you can connect the dots all the way back to what I'm talking about in about 2018. And a couple of times he asked me to, uh, to host because he was doing the show with Steve Mara, who's a synth guy. He's a synthesizer meister uh, in the GBU group. And uh, he's an admin over there too. So those guys were doing the, the show. Before you could even play uh, music, they would just talk about the music. They'd describe. Oh, no. <laughs> they used to draw so, pictures. <laughs> those fucking guys were, but it was brilliant. People watched it. I mean, but right. Can you imagine? And I was, I said, once I came on, Pete said, take this other show, you know, and I'm going to have a show on YouTube. So I started doing the show in the group of, uh, YouTube group, excuse me, Facebook group. Will you keep me straight on my platforms, please, Jade? And it's I, your, your I worked, story, don't mind. I worked over there. Well, you've known me a long time. Uh -huh. Can, if I put if I put my hand up like this, I'm going to sound prophetic when I'm saying this. Back, <laughs> back when I was doing this, the, the uh, GBU live show, doing the GBU live show on the Facebook platform. Yeah. Um, we met during that time frame, and I think the first thing that I ever remember seeing of yours was a very early version of uh, your movie. Oh yeah, that thing. Yeah, uh, and and I was like trying to figure out how to make videos at that time, you know, working on my my video making skills, and I saw that. Plus, you know, you were engaging and helping people out in the group and all that, which is what we were into doing in, in those days. I had not yet discovered YouTube as as really a social kind of thing. I watched it, right? And so that's where we met. And um, I think, uh, you know, we could talk about our collaboration later. And we've, you know, had quite a a few, but um, yeah, that's where I first met you, and uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I don't know what you remember, you may have a completely different. Oh, yeah, uh, none well, of if... none of that makes any sense to me. I have no recollection of any of that, so I, yeah. I, I just was nodding just to make you feel at home. Oh, so do you re do you remember the half a pint of whiskey and and straight jacket version? I only remember the condom. <laughs> But, no, it's, uh, well, why I want to talk about me and you and our relationship, because some people may think that uh, I I don't like you because you have a show and I sometimes am in the chat and I cause a little bit of mischief with you. But this is the thing. We've known each other for so, so long. Uh, you know, you as you said, you used to do uh, the Garage Band GBU Live on Facebook, and then I would join you on there, and I used right. to photo bomb you on there and send photos halfway through because you used to screen capture pretty much Facebook, so you could send anything and it would pop up on the screen. And during your show on YouTube, I often send you dud songs, 
uh, just to try and make you laugh. But that's it. It's all in fun. And um, the the point I want to get to is we've known each other so long, we just naturally bounce off each other. I was saying to someone last week that if I was doing stand-up comedy right, and I needed someone up there with me as a a partner, you would be the first person I would go to because I'd never even have to like pre-run anything by you, just do it and you just catch on all the time. Well, just let me say about all the photo bombs and people who think that I'm pissed off at you. Who who would like what you did to to me? Who would like it, Jade? I mean, Jesus, busting my balls up there in front of everybody, making me look like a complete fool all the time. Yeah, I might have been a little bit pissed off, but I also might have been just checking her out. <laughs> so that's what we do. And people, but, you know, I think maybe it's sometimes it's a little too real because it's like an inside joke and people are going, oh, Ron, his, his feelings look hurt. And then, <laughs> and because when we snap out of it, we don't really say anything, right? We're just no. like back. I'm, I'm like, no. Screw, screw you, Jade. And they're like, oh, and then the next song is by, you know, Daniel Olofsson. You know, <laughs> there's, like there's, no, there's no debrief or anything. Like, you don't finish the show and then call me and go, oh, that was really funny. Like, we may not talk no. again until the next time you're on the show. It doesn't matter. No, because you just see it. And it's it actually, yeah. it, with my show format, which has some, you know, it has an element of comedy, that helps me. You know, for you to do that, because it just throws another little bit of shtick in there that if, you know, I think m- the majority of people get it. I know Joe and Barry Glenn get it. Yeah, of course. And, I and, think a lot of people, I think most people get it too. But, you know, again, in jokes don't always work and people may come into the show and be like, oh, this is my first time here. Why is this lunatic wearing a purple wig? And getting phone calls from random people yelling uh, in Vietnamese at them, and that's just the people you know. Well, <laughs> you are you are kind of mean. <laughs> well, no, no, but I mean, if you're watching shows like ours, yeah, you're watching to see something different, you know. And I think uh, like to for them to look down in this little corner of the internet and here are these two people who obviously have this, uh, you know, like a professional streaming relationship such as it is, you know, for a long time. Hey man. And you can quote me on that. So the professional, let's talk about professional because as you said, you started off over there on Facebook, uh, with GBU live and it was really hard to get you to come over. We, I tried for ages. I was prodding you every day going, come over to YouTube, come over to YouTube. There's no money over right. there in Facebook, you know? And you, well, you started yeah. getting all these claims and stuff and you can't fight right. them over in right. Facebook and they were like shutting down your yeah. videos. And then finally right. you came over and you created right. Indie Live. So, I mean, this wasn't a thing when I interviewed you. You weren't doing homegrown Indie Live. So, you know, right. what yeah. was that like making the transition over from boring old Facebook to over to the glamorous lights of YouTube. <laughs> right, right. All the red carpets and all that stuff. Yeah. So check it. Well, at one point, Facebook was easy to stream in when I first started. And then they, you know, started um, developing their their bots and all of that. Uh for copyright infringement, and then it it, re- it basically pushed m- my show off because it was a complete music show, and Facebook was saying to me, and it was like pulling teeth to get any answer from them. We have a policy now that Facebook will not host music listening experiences. That was, a, I think, the exact term. And I kept getting strikes and they would take it down my videos and I would talk to them and they'll, you know, some guy would say, well, you know, you're okay, but we, you know, we still hold to that policy. And finally I saw Jade and Pete over here. Pete had been over here for a long, the longest time. Oh yeah. 
But, uh, you know, I know you better, you know, because we were hanging out in some other social groups together and all that. And I said, well, I'll just do it, you know. And um, so I had the show. I had developed all of my streaming tech with the other show because I really I tried my best to make all of my shows look and sound the best they can even when it was on Facebook. So I uh, finally chose Ecamm Live as my streaming platform, um, had all of it down, and I basically moved the whole thing, changed some of the branding because I was doing my own uh, logos and uh, associated branding for a long time already, you know, because I like it. That's kind of my background was... Uh, art and graphic design in college and I've always been into that so by the time I moved over and if you you can look on my homegrown indie live channel and see the earliest shows and what kind of graphics I was using and how that has progressed even to today where I'm using you know AI to make my thumbnails and people I know I really don't understand the controversy about AI uh, at, it's at, rubbish. At, at this level. I mean, just look, you know, all I'm trying to do is make something that looks okay for, you know, and it, and if it saves me five minutes making a thumbnail and a, and it's a catchy looking thumbnail, yeah, I'm going to use it. It's, it's no different to me in theory than people using Pixabay to make, you know, or something off the internet to, to make a montage or you know, put in their video or just you're able to manipulate it better now when the, you make videos with Kyber. Am I, I'm getting off subject. No, 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 no. You're right on subject because this is where I was going to go as well. I mean, you make the jump. You've always, uh, 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 that's one of the things I've always been very impressed by with you, Ron. You know, uh, you've, uh, <laughs> it's 4, 4.30 a.m. over there, folks, but just, but just by the way. in uh, just, just a little tipple in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, where Ron joins us. No, but you have always been really, like, forward thinking with your graphics and stuff. It's one of the things I, I wish I was, you know, I do love doing that stuff myself and trying to make everything look as neat and nice as possible and fancy, like it's a real show. And you're exactly the same. Uh, you know, all your logos are fantastic. You shoot really – you've always been ahead of the curve, in my opinion – Right? Even though people, you know, look at you and you go, ah, oh, Ron's forgotten what he's saying or whatever, you know, all that stuff. But you're very, very creative. Um, and you've been ahead of the game with the AI stuff. You know, absolutely. Um, so what what gets you off by making all that stuff? Because I know you spend a lot of time doing it and it shows. Your, your graphics look great. Um, That was the easiest thing for me because my primary background was in graphic arts, not in music, although I had some amount of experience and training in music when I was younger. So when I came back and I started making music on my iPad and just about simultaneously on, on a, a laptop. So I was using GarageBand iOS and, uh, Mac iOS at about the same time when I started during this period, 2017, 20, I started doing it in 2017. Then when I found the GBU group, right? The GBU group over on Facebook and uh, I started doing their graphics for them. I designed the uh, GBU logo, you know, the famous GBU uh, logo over on Facebook, if you're familiar. That was when I first started doing graphics, you know. I think for... I've got a GBU T-shirt. That's your design too, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. that's it. That's the design. Pete wears it sometimes. I wear I mine too. Made, yeah. I made that for the channel. So I was doing graphics for the channel. I was doing graphics for, uh, you know, and then later I was doing graphics for the show. And I don't know if you recall, I for – the show I used to advertise using these little, like they didn't, they don't even didn't have them back then, but it was just like a reel where I'd say, Hey, 
Watch GBU Live this Wednesday, where I'll have Jade Star and a number of weeks songs from the week and all this shit. You know, now that I'm using I'm using CapCut or you know, which I believe, by the way, CapCut on uh, on desktop is brilliant if you know your computer runs it. Yeah, I'm currently but, uh, I'm currently looking at it on iOS. Going to do a show oh, on it soon. It's it's pretty mean. Yeah, I, I love. Yeah, I, it's worth it. So, Subscriptions, you know. Yeah, but you know. Right. Well, I'm using the web based version right now. Just try out that little uh, the vertical that I made today. I made a vert for um, a short for uh, my just my channel. I made it uh, with CapCut just to try it. Pretty cool. It's for I mean, for doing that kind of stuff, it didn't. I didn't really miss doing it in live. Uh, excuse me, Final Cut Pro, because that's what I use, Final Cut Pro. But this new transitions filters that people are using. You can use some music, and uh, uh, but the only thing is, it is a little. Uh, it made my web browser run slow, but it's free, it's really cool. It is cool. I'm going to play a song, Ron. We're going to come back and say hello to everybody. Uh, Let's speaking do it. about you, uh, you know, starting off over at Facebook and then moving over to YouTube, I think that's around the time you actually became an adult. So let's play I Want to Be an Adult. You ready, gang? Let's we'll, do it. We'll be back here shortly and then we'll say hello to you all individually. Let's go. Boom. I'd like to be an adult before I die Do all the things that adults do I wash my hair, comb my face and have a cup of tea Maybe put some paper in the loo And I've been around the world plenty of times Can't get past the part where I grow up Maybe it's coming down the line And I smoke those triple fives with all the drivers in the night And I drank bad shots of whiskey just to prove I was alright I thought it was the prudent thing to do I'd like to be an adult before I die Things that adults do Like take my doggy to the spot To cut his curly hair Before it gets all scarlet Smells like poo And I've been on so many missions far away Where the things I saw and did Started to change me And I never did let life get in the way Says a strange thing, and I broke bread with ambassadors and people in the streets, eating big old steaks from golden plates and roasted chicken's feet. And though many times I played the fool, I often saved the day.
And I drank those shots of whiskey just to prove I was all right. That that song is absolutely freaking hilarious. You love those lyrics, man. <laughs> when you said, taking the dog. T- <laughs> Take my dog to the pound to cut his curly hair. Before it, it, gets smells, all, like, before it gets all snarled and smells like poo. If you got a poodle, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fucking poodles. That was the best. <laughs> Uh, you can't beat it. Ron Ward's legend. Uh, we're going to talk about your music in a second. Let's say hello to everybody here. Hello, JDL. Hello, Ed Zielinski. Fish 1999. Of course, we've got, I have to do the sound effect. Dr. Zorders. That's been a while. Again, uh, Kim Harden Hudson. Hello to you. Robbie Stingle. What's going on? Hugh Caldwell. Ali Strong. Always a pleasure to see you, darling. Uh, we've got uh, Thomas Christ. Okay. Uh, who else? Scott Borthwick. SM Borthwick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Scott Borthwick. Development yeah. of a Void. Uh, take over. D- right take on. over, Ron. Come on. The Falcro, Joe and Barry Glenn. Yeah. Fish 1999. You already said that. I already said they fail. Jade Star. Okay. That's all. Audible video. <laughs> <laughs> you got to let me know in the chat if you're here uh, so I can uh, call your name out. So just write something and I can find. I'm trying to search for names, but because uh, I Roca know Valaneda. Yes, uh, Pete Johns was here earlier. He's probably lurking the gherkin. Hello, Void. Um, Conspiracy Music's here as well. Hello, Clay. We've got Joe and Barry Glenn. The combination. Uh, speaking of those two, you'll hear them after this show. And like, yeah, we said you. We said you fish. We got you. What day is this? Who knows? I have no. The Glens. The Glens. Somebody, you know, the local police are probably going to need to look in their backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Call the county sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> I love those guys. They are <clears throat> they are amazing. So uh, thank you for being here, guys. If I missed your name, I saw Indy, uh, many in the, in the, and many in many in the, I get my brain to man. I am a mess today. I'm turning into Ron. See, this is what you do, Ron. You make my knees go to jelly. No, man, just go for it. You're doing fine. I was like, I woke up this morning. I'm like, it's early, but at least I don't have to run the show. I just sit there. <laughs> I can't forget. I saw Cold Acre here as well. So we're going because we're going to bring Acre. him up. We're going to bring him up shortly. Um, okay, up. So you used to be, and when last time when I spoke to you, the main band you were in at the time was Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard with Brian Bigler. So. Tell me, what's the gossip? What's the update on this? Is it on hold? Are you doing anything in the future? What happened? Okay, so Brian and I ended up making about 30 to 40 songs together, re- recordings. And we played a lot of other music too. Uh, you know, things that you don't actually record, they don't work out or whatever. So, and most of those are um, on YouTube. Some have been released through DistroKid. Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard released one album, and there it is. You can see it on Spotify. Is that Spotify or Apple Music? Oh, this is Apple Music, yeah. There you go. So, uh, And um, so after that, we did a bunch of singles as well. After the album, which was called Live Jive Fantasy. And then in about 2020, during the kind of lockdown... Brian started working on some solo music and I really started building up my YouTube channel more than uh, using that energy to make uh, a lot of songs for the band. Although we didn't close the band, you know, the project is still open. Uh, Brian and I do collaborations, mostly uh, me adding backup vocals or harmonies to some of his songs and we don't put out of the question the possibility of more Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard songs in the future. We did a lot of covers. 
I don't think many people remember that most of the songs that Brian and I did right in the beginning, first 10, 15 songs were covers, you know, and then we said, we're going to write some songs ourselves. So we did. So that's what's up with Brian. I mean, he's still making music. He's got a new studio there in Boston where he is. That he's built for himself. And uh, we're pursuing mostly solo ventures right now, but I we still keep up with what's going on. And so my new music, you know, uh, label after Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard is Strange Machine. That's what I've been kind of developing since the uh, hiatus of Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard. Yes. Um, so, and Brian's uh, just released a new album, I see as well. So uh, that's really cool too. But yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating how, like, like, what would you say is the difference? Because I'm going to bring up his Strange Machine here. So you've got a whole lot of releases here and you've got this, uh, do you call this an EP or is it an album? This one here. Well, it, it, evidently, if I'm not wrong, DistroKid makes it an album at seven. And right. An, e an EP at six. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's so officially they, an album. <laughs> right. I didn't do that on purpose, but I did find that out afterwards because I released Wait a minute. Yeah, I released one after this with six, and it was an EP. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, the the uh, uh, hello to B Blue Unicorn. I think I saw Pookie um, as well. Jenny Jolivet, welcome aboard to those we missed saying hello to. So what is the main difference, do you think, between the Boston, uh, Saigon Slick and the Boston Bar to what you're doing now with Strange Machine, Ron? Well, I guess it's kind of like the difference between any band that has a sound, a certain sound and a certain type of music, any band. Think of it, the Beatles, you know, of course, people do. And then think of their solo career, right? So like George Harrison's music doesn't really sound like the Beatles. So when I was with Brian... Most of the time in the beginning, he wrote the entire musical composition on the guitar because they were in his head. He recorded it on GarageBand at that time. That's what we were using. But he does a good job. Sent me the whole project all done. Guitars, drums, and bass. And then I would write all the words, usually. Or he'd have some and I'd write the other ones and i was the singer right so i was the singer in the band primarily and the lyricist yeah. right and then it changed to where by the time we started working with you i was writing songs and you know we both kind of got into it so then we had our sound but all of our music was very serious yeah 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 <laughs> All of our it music was. was like we was we were like we weren't trying to be pretentious, really. We weren't. It was just that that was the way that the music came out and the chemistry between Brian and me, you know. And it, I think it's a lovely body of music. I still consider it to be, you know, uh, a success oh, that absolutely. I was in, yeah. involved with, you know. Uh, and it and you know it w wasn't completely devoid of fun because if you look at the covers that we did, <laughs> I mean if, if look at the taking care of business uh, video sometime with me dressed up in drag. I mean, <laughs> I'll never forget it. It's burned into my memory forever. I wake up sometimes at three a.m. Well, well, I know it's because you have because you have sweat. it on it. You have it in the. Uh, a hotkey on your phone I so do. you're going to watch it I in the middle of the night. It's in my <laughs> spank bank, Ron. That's right. Uh, but it, that's interesting because, well, you say that, you know, it's, it was serious and I kind of agreed, but at the same time, there was a lot of fun songs, original songs yeah, like Godzilla and, you know, oh, yeah. you, you know, you guys were lighthearted. I would say Brian was the more serious and you were the more kind of rock and run. And, and you can see that now. Right, Brian just released this new yeah. album, and you're doing Strange Machine, and the the two 
uh, differences. You know, they're quite different. But let me just say this, Ron. This was, you know, when I had you on the show back then, the community of music here on YouTube wasn't as strong as what it is right now across so many mm. channels. You right. were, to me, like the first, you know, international collaboration. There was you over there in Ho Chi Minh City and then you've got um, Brian over there in the US and you guys were smashing out songs and had this, mm. you know, method down. So it was really, you know, uh, before everyone just got together smashing it because now, oh God, people are putting out songs. <laughs> Like a lot of tomorrow. people are doing are doing the same thing, but I remember people asking us, "How do you do that?" Yeah, and it was before everyone figured it out, you know, and and before pe people had shows like your show, educational shows like yours and Pete's, you had them, but now you guys have talked about just about everything, so people can figure out how to collab. You know, if they need to, and there's enough information to be able to do it. Brian and I figured it out, and uh, I learned so much so much about recording songs because hell i didn't really know that much in 2018 that's when brian and i started um we just he knew a little more than me and we just did it because garage band is pretty intuitive if you you know if you're thinking about stuff and then we learned we were in the garage band users group man and that group i have to say that group is still an excellent group. It is. Constantly you know? learning things all the time. Yeah. People sharing yeah, information. And, and the best part about it is, is entry-level people don't get poo-pooed, you know? Entry-level questions and people in, uh, you know, saying, here's my beat, here's my beat. I, uh, <laughs> If I can, I want to say to those people, give them a like. That's a group, you know, that's a uh, ill and beat there you know uh <laughs> i'm trying to learn the language of the slang of the, <laughs> the current generation <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> we'll, we'll talk so about anyhow, <laughs> yeah so so brian and i during that period i learned a lot and so by the time then i kind of i didn't leave recording but i slowed down recording in order to develop uh my youtube channel and my shows over there, which I spent a year or so, year and a half, kind of really grinding on shows over there too. So, but you know, you can't be like one of us with a, a streaming show in this community without making some songs sometimes because you're street cred, you know? Street cred. <laughs> Well, it's hard. It, it's hard work to find the balance, and I, and I have a. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, mm. but not only did you start Strange Machine, and hello to Frank Terzo, and of course Feisty Feather, and anyone else who's joined, welcome aboard. Um, because uh, you kept the whole collaboration thing going with uh, Strange Machine. I remember when you, when you kicked it off and Tuck's T-shirt comes about, I'm like, all right, well, this is this is the real Ron Ward <laughs> right here with Tuck's T-shirt. But then all of a sudden you you continue the collaborations with more people. And I'm going to kick off this by playing a collaboration. Uh, this is uh, To Be Near You with uh, Cold Acre and Lou Reality, Rise of Dark Leela. So I'll play this. And then we'll yeah, she was on the vid. She helped us with the video. Exactly. So we'll play this and um, then we'll come back and talk about your experiences collaborating with these new partnerships you've got going on with Strange mm. Machine and where machine, Strange Machine's going. You ready, guys? We're going to play To Be Near You. Let's do it. We'll see you back here shortly. Boom. Strange Machine, we're all to the D, strange to the M, if you were thinking we've offended, then think again. We like to make it personal when we get down, our chili beats are rocking every club in town. Come on, 
think of me, but Bennett didn't think again. We like to make it personal when we get down. Our chili beats are rocking every club in town. Well, that was weird, wasn't it? <laughs> well, that's why they call me Strange Machine. Exactly. Strange, just call me the Strange One. <laughs> so, how did you and uh, Cold Acre fall in love? Okay, so spin back. I do my YouTube channel for like a year and a half, really grinding on it after the Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard first uh success there and you know i built up the channel pretty good and then suddenly i realized that i needed a creative break i um you know i knew that the community here was in good hands with jade and pete and everybody and so i kind of took the summer off because i had written songs and i had made a a new year's resolution that year to write 10 songs and to do things like write a memoir, start writing a memoir and um, other types of creative goals that I had set for myself. And I realized that the show was keeping me from doing those things. And it, they, these weren't just goals I came up with at new year's because that's what everybody does. I had songs and words locked within me that I needed to get out there because in my prior career, you know, this this type of creative thinking was not even occurring, but I still <laughs> need it as as my as my human self, you know, because that's the way I began out as a very very creative person and then suddenly I'm in the air force I'm in you know, a POW, my investigator, and I didn't have any time to make sick beats. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so then I re <laughs> so, so, so then I retired and then I started making sick beats, you know. So yeah, that's, no, so, but, that's so what you're known that. for. That's gonna be on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking a. He, he, Hell, he Hell found, yeah. He found countless POW's bodies and made sick beats. Exactly right. Tw and the, the death date, 2055. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, so, so then, what was I talking about? I have fucking no idea. <laughs> no, wait, is it? It was a good transition, though, because you. What was, the, what was the question you asked me? How you, how you and Chili got, were planning getting married? Okay, so then I took my creative break, and I was writing my memoir, which I have started, but my memoir started coming out in music, in my songs as well. Because as I was thinking back on all these old experiences, like growing up and all high school. My first girlfriends, first divorce, second divorce, and then I started to say, "I need some songs." Sixth divorce. <laughs> well, I how many divorces read, have you had, Ron? Two. Oh, and then about but and if you you know if you use any of your bullets there to shoot at me during the interview, I'll divorce you too. <laughs> I'm joking. No, um. So my mute. My music started to kind of display the memoir-like uh, project that I was 
working on. And so I've written, I don't know, a bunch of them. Now, th that particular song, To Be Near You, okay, so, so then, during the period of writing songs, I'm on a hip-hop kick. Because how did I how did I get on hip hop and electronica? Okay. Yeah, exactly. What was it? What, what turned you into a gangster making sick beats? Two people really started me, and the Garage Band Users Group. The Garage Band Users Group had a lot of different kind of um, uh, genres. People using the uh, app to make different kinds of music. And there were a lot of people making beats. And really, beats are pretty easy to make, you know? And so I learned it. Ooh. And then, you you know, to make a good a good rap track, it's not easy. Or make a good hip-hop track. I was going to say, you, you're pissing off a whole lot of people out there going, what? Beats are easy to make. To learn to make beats like I do. I mean, listen to my beats. If you don't think they're illin', then I don't think you're chilling. I don't think you're chilling because I know my beats be killing. <laughs> now listen to my beats; they're great. And so, so, and then, so within the in the Garage Band Users Group, we used to have like like uh, rap uh, <laughs> rap contests and stuff, but not with me. I was just the guy. I was just the white guy there going Ooh, rap. And then, but then Satish Robertson, you, you know Satish? Oh, he was yeah, on yeah, I interviewed Satish. You inter introduced Satish Robertson, who had just released a uh, jazz, wait a minute, it was a hip-hop yeah, jazz yeah. fusion. Yeah, I remember that album, yeah, it was great. It was called <laughs> 80s, yeah, called 80s Joint, right? Yep. And so then there's this hip-hop jazz fusion. At the same time, my friend Jude Capanna is is um who went to like he went to like logic school he went to freaking community college to learn logic and i'm like how, why would you do that when you can just keep getting it wrong all the time until you get it right figure it out watch jade show but anyhow he was using beats you know like rap beats along with uh other drummers to you know you know how you can make uh one drummer follow another beat within Logic or within GarageBand. He'd make a rap beat and then make a uh, a regular acoustic drummer follow it, and he'd get this cool sound. And so then the first one that I wrote using that uh, way of doing it was Pam, my my very first uh, Strange Machine song. It's one of my because favorite songs. That. I can't. You didn't send it to me to play. I, I don't know why. It's too long, you know. I sent you my new stuff, I know, basically. I, I love that song. Um, it's you know, it's a bit of a sensitive subject too. But I do think it's probably my favorite track of my my own. Uh, it's a guitar written track. I wrote it all on an electric guitar, I think, and uh, but it has a rap beat. It has a uh, a hip hop beat. Yep, that was the first one. I feel that, was that, the first that one. you started this move to this new genre. I, I remember when I heard that, I was like, "Is Ron going down the path of Ween?" <laughs> Lil Wayne? No, you mean Lil Wayne? Ween. Ween, not Little Wayne. Ween. Listen, gangster Ron. <laughs> I know you're like stuck in this illin and chilling, and but <laughs> Ween, like that's what yeah. that's okay. what Strange Machine remind me of. Like Ween, it's quirky, mm. it's you know, it's fun, you know, it's it's got all the the stuff you've kind of wanted to say. But I just want to hold hey, you so up there because the the question was, was Cold it? Acre. Cold Acre. So then, <laughs> so I'm. So I made <laughs> I made Touch T-shirt and then other songs like ba Bag and Nails. There's a whole bunch of them. And then about the time of Bag and Nails, I wrote for like last year's song Timber. And that's another hip hop one. I met Coldacre because he was in the um, clubhouse group that we used to hang out in. Yeah. And and so then he and I became friends. And when I took my break. He was one of the few people I was still talking to continuously because I took a break. I really wasn't talking to a lot of people. I wrote, uh, you know, I, I just 
needed a break from outside creative input for a while so I could figure out what was going in, on in my head. But I, uh, I w- was talking to Cold Acre, James Barclay, the whole time for some reason. And to, you know, some extent to Lou Reality, too. Because they, I think, I think because in this, in you know, my community, your mom and Pete's dad, I thought you'd probably told somebody, go watch Ron and make sure he's okay. Go hang out with him. <laughs> But so I was hanging out with Cold Acre and I and then he said I hear a B3 organ on that track that you just sent me. I hear a guitar riff on that track you just sent me. You know, I was sending him all my strange machine music that I was making, you know? And it's hip hop with the a rock edge, a lot of a lot of it, a rock guitar edge. So he uh during that period Oh, we must have done six or seven songs together. He did some synth work for me. Um, the, he did the the main oh, on on the song that we just heard, "To Be Near You." He did like the synth chords, and uh, so it turned out that that was I. I can't explain why that collaboration worked, but we both, you know, it wasn't difficult to do, and I was making songs that were just coming out one after another. And I would just come up here in Logic, get my little keyboard out, turn on the synth arpeggiator and make a bass line, you know, and then make several parts of the song, make three parts, arrange it out, make it sound cool in Logic with, you know, plugins and stuff. And then I sent it to Chili and he laid down a guitar track or he, vocals. He laid down some vocals for me, too. And then we made a video together, that one where we're doing our head like this. We couldn't think of anything else to do. <laughs> so we just said, just, just get up here and shake your head, man. He's like, well, that was a good idea. I have this image for that clip of you two sitting there drinking into the wee hours. Uh, on cam, and then you go, let's do some nodding together. Nah. That's another reason Chili and I get along. All right. Because you know, <laughs> you, you, you booze we up. Like to dr- we like to drink beer and all that. <laughs> and, you know, you. and, hey, I, I would never, you know, kind of uh, push or wish my lifestyle on anyone else. But, man, I'd, I'd live kind of a, a, an odd road. This would led me out to... Uh, just going to have to have a little tipple. Oh, good God. <laughs> it's five it's, It's five in the morning. Uh, right now. It was 5.10. <laughs> all right, it's 5.10. Hey, it's all good. Hey, it's all good. As, as, anyway. Jimmy Buffett, as Jimmy Buffett would say, rest his soul, it's five o'clock somewhere. He never said whether it was supposed to be 5 a.m. or 5 p.m. <laughs> Okay, so did he, so did he, did he used to I say met, that? I just thought he used to say, "Come and eat at my tacky restaurants." <laughs> I've been there; the service was like terrible. Man, I, I saw man. his shows are great, though. There's a video on YouTube of this dude who goes around to every one of his restaurants throughout America to see if they're consistent. And let me tell you, that they're not. I think nearly uh, four of those restaurants he went to, he got food poisoning from. The one in uh, Hawaii we had really bad slow service, man. And, right. But I went to the that same trip. I went to see him at a show. It kicked ass. It was fun. Well, somebody, so, yeah. but somebody who doesn't have slow service, uh, Ron. Let me tell you about this. Is today's sponsor, DistroKid. Yes. <laughs> Is that a segue right. or what? Yeah, you like that, uh, man. You see how she did that? You see, you barely. You barely notice it. Absolutely. Because if you release your music through DistroKid, man, it doesn't take long at all to get your music up on all of the streaming services like Apple, Spotify, um, Amazon. In fact, the last few times I've released music through them, it's been up within like a couple of days. Over time, they are getting faster and faster and faster to get your music up online. And why would you want to get your music up online? Well, that's up to you. Why do I put my music out through DistroKid? A, because it's cheap as chips. B, because I love having my music next to such celebrities as Yanni 
and uh, Strange Machine. Strange Machine, exactly. <laughs> no, but I, I just love having my music on Apple Music and being able to <laughs> share it with anyone I want because it's really cool. And it's super cheap to do so at $22.99 annually. But if you use my code that's up the top there, distrokid.com slash VIP slash Jade Star, you'll get 7% off your first year. Absolutely. And as you can see, I've released a hell of a lot of music. Look at it all. Heaps of it. Whoa. And Ron, you've released a lot of music too, haven't you? Right. I use DistroKid and I've released two albums, including the one we were just talking about with Cold Acre. That one was called uh, Dance Tracks for Maniacs. And then a bunch of singles. And uh, easy to use. I'm, I've made some videos with it at, as well, which I've been satisfied with. So, yeah, it's cool. And today I'm going to do something fun because I haven't done it for a while and I've got a new song out. So I'm going to head over to the Wheel of Playlist, which is one of the free little features here. Let me make sure I'm connected to Spotify. I've got to pick a song. And I want to see if I can get my latest song, Utensils Dread Circus, into the uh, Spotify playlist. And what you do here is you get, I think you get three spins a day. Where is this song? I don't know. What is it called? The Dread Circus. S T. <laughs> I'll go, go. There it is. The Dread Circus single. I've got too many Dread Circus thingies. All right. Connect with Spotify. Let's go. So you log into your Spotify here. I'm I'm done, and you get three spins per day. Spin the wheel, and you could end up high on the Distro Kid Spotify playlist. Well, that's not very high, so I'm going to spin again. You get three of them until you get bumped. Man, not having good luck, am I? <laughs> go for it, Jade. Come on now. Oh, I do, oh, eight, oh. Eight, eight. I'll take 888. So there you go. Take I've it. been added to the playlist at song 888 until somebody knocks me off the list. Yeah? So that's good fun. So that's just one of the little things. And there's heaps of these little things you can do to promote yourself. You know, lo lots of little uh, icons and little uh, clips you can make. So it's endless. Just one of the many things of using DistroKid. And I want to thank DistroKid for being the sponsor of today's show because I've been with them for many, many, many years and I love the service. As I always say, I love you, Distro. All right, that wasn't. It's never. It, it's never creepy, Ron. Trust you're me. such a cheat. You're such a cheeser. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it, man. I love it. It's excellent. Well, you know, you know this because you've got to be. You're an entertainer, Ron. That's what this is all about on YouTube, and you do this really well. This is something that I love about what you do here on YouTube. But it takes a lot, doesn't it, mm. to get up here talking about your music. Uh, Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard, you moved to uh, Strange Machine, do collaborations with Cold Acre. Then uh, you're doing this YouTube show and all of a sudden you start to realise, man, a lot of my time is being taken up by doing this show because with YouTube, you've got to keep it going right. to keep momentum well, it's or, or it's, you get lost in the job. algorithm. Yeah, it, it is. And, and did you find you struggled making music? Yeah. I did. I uh, treated the show as a job for a year and a half, which, you know, and I did it uh, deliberately. I wanted to build up the show, and I knew that, you know, Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard had kind of slowed down, and Brian was working on some of his stuff, and I liked doing the show. Because I also have a background in theater, and I, I wish I had a background in broadcasting, you know, in school. But, I mean, I like doing presentations. I like, uh, you know, kind of uh, doing comedy. I enjoy. I enjoy, uh, you know, doing talk. So, I, I used to love... AM radio DJs when I was a kid. That's probably my biggest influence on my show because I used to listen to these cheesy guys. You know, they had these these uh, campy sticks that they would do on their shows, you know, like recurring characters or, you know, jokes with um, followed by, you know, a, a rim shot uh, sound or something like that. And I loved it. 
And so that's kind of what's helped uh, what what helped me stay focused for that year and a half. So after a year and a half on the show, when I did struggle to make music, all, although I made songs during that time, I took time off and said, I'm going to write 10 songs in a year and, and the well, year's not over. I'll probably end up writing 20. Now, some of those, well, I, I released this year so far, six and seven, 13 songs on DistroKid this year. Uh, so it's not over yet. We'll see how it goes. So that's, that's fantastic. More than 10. That's really fantastic work. And, and you know, Thanks. here's the thing, Ron, when you took a break now, and I know it, it's hard, right? When you're a fan, I'm a fan. I'm a fangirl over you. I love you. I, when your shows are on, I get excited. So I know we're going to have a laugh and you're going to play some people's music. And I know most people who see you on are excited. And when you took a break, I feel bad that I was one of the people who probably there were many around you who are going, don't go, Ron. But we love you, Ron. Stay, Ron. And I think looking back at that, I think that was really unfair speaking for myself because I understand that you need to take breaks from this kind of stuff to look after your mental health as well. Because this is pretty full on continuing yes. keeping up with this. It really weighs on you uh, to keep producing new content, keep it not offending anybody at the same time, trying to be offensive and be yourself, keeping mm. up and playing people's music. It's, it's very hard to do, but you've got to take these breaks for your own sanity. Is this yeah. part and of the reason you, you had a break as well to clear your mind a bit? Well, the, you know, I think depending on your personality, you might need to take, breaks from long periods of work yeah i mean uh, i just needed to uh and it was a sacrifice because i built that channel up to where i wanted it to be the youtube channel homegrown indie got over 500 subs was getting ready to be able to be monetized but then i realized that you know and which is the thing and so I sacrificed. I was ready to actually stop doing the show if I had to, because I had to get these songs out. Like the one that you heard, I want to be an adult. Well, I had to write that. That that song's biographical. And so the show took a hit during this past summer of 2023. And I must say, I had a lot of personal things going on too. This was a big year for me. Um, I got some financial paperwork done that I needed to do. I thought about taking a job, a big, another big job back in the U S in the Washington DC area. And I decided not to do it during that period of time. I was doing a lot of, uh, thinking and I wouldn't quite say it was at the soul searching level, but I had a lot of shit to do this summer and I started the memoir, I'm well into it. I'm up to the girlfriend part. <laughs> and and a, do you really want to go here now? <laughs> no, no. But a lot of my biography is coming out in the songs. If you listen to I, I want to uh, be an adult. You know, it says I've been around the world so many times, but I can't get to the part where I grow up. Because <laughs> you know, that's me. I really wherever I am. I still have this kind of a uh, childish viewpoint of things, even though I'm in a in a room full of adults. And even when I have adult, uh, you know, re responsibilities, I do them. But you know, like when I go over to Metalhead Hippie Show, and the way he conducts his show, I feel like God, man. I'm in the room full of adults. <laughs> I gotta go back to my homegrown indie where everybody's a kid. I feel like I'm the Mr. Rogers of the community. <laughs> Run back to your box of wigs. Fucking <laughs> okay. oh, a box of wigs and whatever else I got going on up here. So uh Okay, so what are we talk about? Well, I'm going to play a song because you mentioned it and then we're going to come come back and talk about your memoirs and stuff and mental health and that stuff. Because just because you mentioned the ladies, I want to play this. This is Jezebel Lee. 
<laughs> Let's play it. Okay. <laughs> Well, she was looking like an angel in a Hollywood movie, but she stole my car and drove it out to Hollywood with some dudes from the hood. Stole my credit card and went out dancing on the boulevard with some dude from France, and that's the last time I'll be romancing Jezebel Lee. Short and sweet. Right. So that song was, here's one thing I did during my break that I never had done before. I get a, I, I get a kind of a creative boost out of um, playing live, you know, watching myself on Ecamm and, um, you know, having a few drinks and trying to come up with some lyrics, right? I'm not broadcasting. I'm just recording. So some of these songs that you're hearing, including I Want to Be an Adult and Jezebel Lee and some of the other ones on there, like 57 seconds, were all recorded. The vocals were all recorded live. And then simultaneously, I, was, I would record it on Ecamm and record it into Logic. You know, I was using uh, Logic Remote to record it at the same time, right? So if I came up with anything good, I would just uh, leave it. You know, I cut it, and then I might add some more guitars and stuff in Logic because, you know, it was a Logic project as well as just an Ecamm. So the audio was going into Ecamm too, but I didn't use the Ecamm audio. The point is, is I made a lot of these short videos just to get these ideas out. And people are going, why is he putting the, out these partial songs on, <laughs> on your Strange Machine channel? Number one, I was practicing. Number two, I was practicing getting them out of my head and onto some kind of a canvas. And then some of those songs turned into complete songs that I released on albums. This Jezebel Lee did not. It hasn't yet. But here's the here's my next step. So I made two EDM albums. And that's the way I got my creative flow starting was to use those shorts. And then the, the shorts turned into longs. Does anybody ever have that happen? It's only I have the... <laughs> Stay for Jade, the shrimp, the, folks. <laughs> yeah. Jade's going to go watch my taking care of business video now. <laughs> <laughs> so I got ideas that way. And then uh, at the same time that I was writing EDM, though, I have the, this um, classical guitar the Vietnamese guy made for me. It's really a beautiful sounding instrument, which I have been used to using to write acoustic songs, right? And country music songs and folk songs. Why am I doing that when I'm also doing rap at the same time? It's just because it's in me, man. And then it has to come out. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Jade, she used, to, she used to photobomb me with this shit. Look at me, man, back in the day. You look like you look psychotic. That was well, we were trying to look at Brian, that, man. I swear to God, that's the most fun I've ever look at Brian smiling. <laughs> that's no, the most yeah. fun I've ever seen him have, and he's with these dogs. <laughs> how could how look at how could you not smile? No, he goes, Can I put these pictures of my dog in there? I said, Fuck yeah. Is there any more clips of you dressed as a woman in this or not? I can't remember. <laughs> 
No, well, I think at the very end. All oh, right, well, let's get to that. Because there's nothing better. There <laughs> dude, you, dude, you look like well, you just, just stop it. Just you stop look like the you video. just fell out of a bin there, <laughs> and then you're in a suit. What's going? On? What's going on? You have to listen to the lyrics. Well, I can't play it because I get a, a claim. Why? Take not? A, Brian is a great guitar player. He Go is. over to my to my channel. He's got on, dirty uh, feet there. I have a. Uh, <laughs> A playlist on my Strange Machine channel with the, all the Saigon Stick and the Bust and Bard, the old videos, I, some of the new stuff, not. But this dude can play guitar, dude. Oh, yeah. He really yeah. can. He's a gun. Mm. So, are you done talking about me dressing up like a well, girl I'm, yet? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just waiting to see the, the, the last bit. I don't want to skip because it just goes out. Well, it's got, got to be at the end now. Where is it? Well, he. This is no. This is me giving Brian a long ass guitar solo at the end. There it is. It's at the end. so. There's nothing at the end. You lied to no. me. No, you, it came back one time. I said stop it right there. There. If you just if you want to stop it right there and take a picture, send, send it to my local. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> Here Jim. it is. There we there go. It is. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Look, man. To and you know, people are going because I'm I'm straight. But and uh, and you sure? some of my no, I am. But some of my people on my other my in my other life look at me. I have a lot of trans friends. I have a lot of gay friends, and it doesn't bug me. I know, I know. To I put on woman, woman's makeup because, you know. You look good, I actually. Fucking, I don't fucking care, man. You look fucking good. Oh, man, if, if I was trans, I'd be fucking killed. Hey, if I was in a dark alley and, you know, <laughs> my eyes are closed, you know, <laughs> I think I think we'd be all right. So, um, well, you, well, I'd probably have to shave first. but No, no, but, it's all right. You, you can... <laughs> well, I just mean my my nose hairs. Exactly. You know? Well, that that's a that's a given. I may that, want to cut those. That would have to be done. So <laughs> I'm totally lost. What I, I can't what, believe it. What are we? What am I watching here? I have no idea. What are what are, what are 32 people watching here? Thank you I all just for want, being here. By the way, <laughs> I want everybody to know this is empty. That I was no drinking going on at five o'clock in the morning. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Ruin the illusion. We're, we're breaking well, the fourth wall, Ron. Oh, sorry. Oh, man. You know, <laughs> no, because I like, no, this is the show where we break the fourth wall. I'm not going to break it on my show. So, so I he, want Distro Kid to know that you, me and you aren't sitting here drinking on this show. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to be okay with it. Mm. So, Ron. Okay. This is the one thing that I love about you, right? You, yes. for, since I've known you, you have been such such a, a pusher of music from these communities. You know, you, you really do push people's music. Before yourself, uh, you know, you were the first channel that I ever saw that was over on Facebook that was really pushing people's music every week. There you were. And now it seems like everybody does it. You know, it's, it's everywhere you kind of turn. What is it about this community that you know you you love the music and 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 how have you seen it grow and and just what what gets you excited about it, Ron? I think that music brings out the part of people, no matter what their you know like personal disposition is or or whatever. It brings out the best in people, and so. You know, you're not going to get in there and talk about politics or a bunch of crap, you know, when you're, I don't mean, you know, politics is crap, although these days, but you're going to be talking about music, which everybody can relate to. And then this particular community seems to revolve around people who have these hopes to get their music career back online after a while, along with a lot of professionals as well who've been doing it all along. So I was a guy in the first category. And I, as I 
became a moderator in the Facebook group, I just started to relate to everybody who was trying to get their music played. And then here, here you go. Here's a piece of history. Pete Johns introduces me to Brian in 2018 because Brian is looking for somebody to sing vocals on a version, a cover that he did of Comfortably Numb. And so Pete goes, and then Pete might have known me for maybe like two months or something in the group. He goes, well, Ron Warwick might sing it. So I did, and that right there was the beginning of me and Brian. And so then Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard was going. We were kind of cutting edge in the group, Brian and I, as far as releasing finished music with videos, because I was figuring out how to use iMovie. And iMovie is a great program, you know, for some, you know, if you just want to make basic videos of yourself, green screen. I learned how to use green screen during that period. And uh, yeah, so whatever I was talking about, I was just, <laughs> yeah, I think you, you oh, answered. Over to, you answered. <laughs> over to you, Jay. No, you, <laughs> I love it. You get, you answer the question and you get to the point where you just go, hang on, what's the question? Have I answered it? <laughs> Wait, like, um, you know me, I roll on a rant and people, people who watch my show, either they like that or they w watch it once and go, this guy does. <laughs> He's going on and on. Click something else. But. Well, I'm making sure I get through plenty of songs today because, as you said, these Strange Machine songs, they're quite shorter than the other ones. I remember Saigon right. Slick songs, some of them went for 45 minutes. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and even my early songs, uh, like Tuck's T-shirt, is kind of long. But this came out of my, my system of making shorts songs or short movie clips on my strange machine uh youtube channel just to get my creative process going i'd come up here in the studio at night turn out the lights you know get relaxed and start jamming and and another thing i started using uh during this period more was the drum machine i got a a, a beat buddy foot pedal and a trio band a uh, foot pedal to come up here and jam and come up with these ideas. And then if it sounded cool, I'll just record it. I think th both of those songs that you played Jezebel Lee and I want to be an adult were with uh, some kind of drum pedal instead of being in logic. And then some of them I worked in logic and it was just a really creative period for me right then, you know, would you say uh, a little bit of white lightning? Let's uh, let's play. Let's a check this one out. Let's play this a one has bit. yeah, it has Cold Acre, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course it does. White lightning. Okay. <laughs> of course it's. Good. Let's do it. White lightning. Cold Acres <laughs> with white lightning. Exactly. Absolutely. Let's do it. I went around to the other side of the world. Of the world. Just to get you off my mind Around the world, around the world But you put that voodoo on my soul You stunned me girl, you stunned me girl And now I just can't stand to go I'll be with you, but I'm gonna need some white light then White light then Gonna need some white light then Some white light then Gonna need some I white light then I have to make these tracks to fix my brain the beach broad in my railroad train And the disruptors have all gone insane But the haircut girls all know my name I went around to the other side Of the world, of the world Just to get you off my mind Around the world, around the world But you put that voodoo on my soul you stunned me, girl. You stunned me, girl. And now I just can't stand to go. I'll be with you, but I'm gonna need some white light then. White light then. Gonna need some white light then. Some white light then. Gonna need some white light then. A bumblebee bow. A new herb grinder with a clearing low. I got to get down to the jiggity bee. So let me put your booty in the driver's seat. Chicken check with plenty of time. You're sitting, getting killed by my music. 
music and ride. A five, a six, a seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna get your body rocking one more time. I went around to the other side of the world, of the world, just to get you off my mind. Around the world, around the world, but you put that voodoo on my soul. You stunned me, girl. You stunned me, girl. And now I just can't stand to go. I'll be with you, but I'm gonna need some white light. White lightning, gonna need some white lightning. Some white lightning, gonna need some white lightning. What's really cool, all right, about this stuff is um, no, I've known Cold Acre for years, years and years, and we both know each other through metal pretty much. Metal. And, um, you know, he's played on my Meteor's tracks and, I, I mean, I've known he'll be on the show one day and we'll tell the story of how we know each other because it's quite a weird story. Yeah. Um, that oh, Julie's come on. That's great. That's great. It, it doesn't involve a dark alley. Let me tell you that. Or a condom. <laughs> but um, so it's really cool to see him, like, uh, branch out because, like, he's, he, he's not one-dimensional. He doesn't just play metal. Yeah, he, uh, no man. No, he loves funk. I know. So that's no. how that's how we got this. Well, he loves loves funk and the blues. The first two songs that we grooved together on were the Roasted Frog. He put down the B three organ, and then uh, there's another one too. And he said, uh, "Oh no, funk funk four twenty nine, funk that funky one." So I made a funky riff with the uh, the guitar. And he just added a bunch of other guitars. So, uh, yeah, the, the dude can play all kinds of stuff. Oh, he he's, loves, a, he's a sick guitarist. Like He loves he, rap, too, man. To, I to mean, me, he, he's like, man, on guitar, he's like up there with Jeff Buckley. He's next level. He and, he's, and he's dad, too, man. His dad's a sick guitarist. I've seen videos hmm. of Chili and his dad jamming together. Fuck me, is that sick, hmm. you know? Fucking, he he, is, he's a man. sick guitarist, but there's all this other side of him. There's this sensitive side, you know, where he's not writing songs about like throwing poo at people and stuff in in filth, and uh, you know. So yeah, it's really good to see that he's found you, and you, you're both creating this very unique stuff. And it's good to see he's using that keyboard as well. Yeah, he. That's kind of the first thing he did for me, you know. And I was like. Like I said, when I took a, that creative break last summer, you can call it a sabbatical. You can call it, a, you know, a, a gap in my resume. Call it what you want. But I was still talking to Chile for some reason because, like, you know, we were always inebriated. And so <laughs> we knew. So I, I knew if I said some messed up stuff to him on you know a text message uh, one night the next morning i wouldn't have to go because he wouldn't remember would he <laughs> deleted and apologize to him no because he gets it <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. He, he, same thing to me but then uh i i was sending it in my music and uh yeah and now and by that way i was keeping still keeping in contact with the community i did not want to lose the community and i have to tell you so i got through that that period and i think the period i mean i could say not that it's open and closed but basically yeah i'm not going to be taking a break from streaming anymore i have reached a happier medium between streaming and music i'm i'm going to be streaming less I'm leaving the you know music uh, DJ business to more to Thomas and Pete, but I will be still doing it and having enough time for Strange Machine and my other music projects. I got to have a guitar in my hand every day now because I only got so much time left. I'm 62. And my guitar playing, oh, here's another thing. During the summer, I took guitar lessons for about the whole time to learn some guitar theory. I I probably remembered about 25% of it, <laughs> but I mean, it's, you know, I did, I, I took out of it what I needed. I had got a tutor to come over to my house and sit with me. So um, 
I play every day. I want to be a better guitar player by the time I die. Who knows why? Because I, you can't take it with you. But, you know, I think if there's anything that you could take with you, it would be the energy that you created during your life, or at least you pass on when you go. So I want to create enough good musical energy so that when I pass on, you know, it's out there. It can just go into the world and make the world a little more musical. And I, I say that with no amount of jest. And don't don't start asking me about my spiritual convictions. I wasn't. Uh, the next, the next, <laughs> after all that, you know, wonderful talk about you <laughs> passing on and your legacy. <laughs> the very next question was: So, Ron, why do you wear such a ridiculous amount of wigs <laughs> on your show? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was trying to remember. <laughs> Exactly how that started. Yeah, what the hell, dude? It was like oh, there, you, there you were playing people's yeah. music, and it was like you know, <laughs> God, playing people's music, and you're like, and here's this new song, and then all of a sudden you just started wearing these fucking wigs, and then all of a I sudden think- you had a bag of them, and then each week you had new ones, and it was like <laughs> it it took over the show like an infestation of rats. Well, I had the show. This was the first wig. I got this wig and I started that stuff during COVID and everybody was so, you know, down and everything. And I decided that I was going to have a comedy element to my show. And I got another wig and I got another wig, you know, and I kept, and I was doing two or three shows a week then. At least two. Remember, I was, I was doing what GBU live on Wednesday. Three. You guess yeah, sometimes, and some people were going, "What the fuck?" Well, I don't look. I I burnt myself out, kind yeah. of on purpose. I kind kind of on purpose though, because I do that. You know me. I got a short attention span, so I learn as much as I can, and then sometimes it burns up. But that's it's not good to, to use the burnout method because then you look like me in the end. <laughs> does, does your wife come upstairs sometimes and see that bag of wigs and go, what the fuck are you doing up here, Ron? No, well, check it out. My wife, this also came out of a, a love for cosplay and, and Halloween, you know, costumes. My wife and I both love to dress up, you know, like uh, superheroes she likes to be Black Widow. I, I did Captain America one year. And then, so, I wore a wig one year to be Mark Antony, right? So I got this wig on. It's a black wig coming down like this. I, someday I'll send you that picture. I, I look, you know. What? Sexy? Uh, really trans, man. All right. <laughs> No, I don't. I look sexy, but here's <laughs> here's the deal. I she didn't care. I mean, right. she knew I was doing a show, and I'd worn wigs before, and uh, it was not a question in our marriage. You know, everything still <laughs> you know, was okay. You know, I didn't wear. I didn't start wearing her dresses. <laughs> That's okay. So <laughs> I love the wigs, you know. I love the wigs. The wigs were the, and the wigs were fun. People yeah. liked them. It was and something different, man. Like everyone else was just playing the songs it's, and and it's show business. It is show business after all. And you would go away, and sometimes I would see the comments. You'd stop putting the comments up on the screen, and I'd say, "While well, I'm watching in the chat, I'd go, he's putting on a wig. Which one? We'd have bets in Clubhouse. Which wigs he gonna wear this time? And then you blow us all away with a brand new one." And it was just crazy. And I'll bet uh, Party City was just loving you during that period of time. It was fun. You know, that was a fun period of time, man. It is. It it, it was awesome and I I love it. So uh, also on some of the fun stuff that happens on your show, do you want to explain? Let's let's talk about this because people probably come in and they hear this word that gets said on your show and they probably don't understand what it means. (laughs) Oh, Duma, Duma, Duma. <laughs> Ron, in, in, 
because all right, I understand what it means, right? Because I grew up with a lot of Vietnamese friends, and I would hang out with them all. And every third word, I would hear "man." I'd be like, "What the fuck is that word?" I keep hearing all the time. And then they told me what it meant, and I, then I had more questions of like, "But why is it in every sentence?" Ron, tell us what officially what "dumma" means uh, in Vietnamese. Well, I just have to. If I just said it, it wouldn't be very nice. But just let me explain about the Vietnamese is they they have uh, a Confucianist family structure. So whoever is older than you, as in Confucian Confucianist belief, is your superior, right? So if you say something to about something's mo- someone's mother is worse than we say because we say fuck you, right? Yeah. yeah. They say duma, which is fuck your mother. <laughs> so it's so much worse in a way if you think about it. I, look, it's the- like fuck <laughs> you. It's like come on, I'll punch you in your nose. You say fuck your mother. It's like damn, just- man. That's what if you're down there in Compton, you know, it's just like. The North and the South will be <laughs> Tupac and Biggie again. <laughs> it's amazing because, as I said, like you hear it in every conversation and like that, it, they'll just be talking about like, what did you have for dinner last night? And I'll be like, well, if you if you break it, if you translate, the response will be, well, I had dinner and go fuck your mother. It tasted awesome. <laughs> like, and it does to me, I just go, why do they say that so much? <laughs> well, I mean... It's. <laughs> I live in a neighborhood. It's like a middle class kind of Vietnamese. See so you, bandit. And Sorry. if you go out there, people curse. You know, I mean, it's I just don't... like anywhere. But I mean, and men curse, and the women here, they'll be saying that. I mean, and it's it's a, it's kind of a different thing been cursing everyone kind of curses here and so they'll pick up the phone and one person will say all right spit it out don't be afraid and the other one will go well fuck your mother i need to get some i need to get some wontons (laughs) (laughs) so i just need to clear that up so people know what we're putting in chat but uh, true here uh uh, does mean different things in different dialects because there are different dialects yeah but um, uh, yeah. So there's that as well. Uh, well, now, yeah. We are getting close to the end of the show, Ron, because I have to get out of here a little bit earlier today, because I have a premiere happening over here on my channel, uh, which is the first episode of my Walk with Me, which we're doing through November. Um, which we're doing through November, where I'm trying to walk to get fit. So hopefully you can all come and join me at the end of the show. I'll bounce you over to that. Uh, come and watch the premiere with me of this. Um, so I want to ask you lastly, just about where you're heading in the future. What's next for Ron Ward? What can we expect? I know your book is a thing. Your memoirs is coming up. What can we expect over the next three years before you come back on the show? (laughs) I think, um, more music and my next album is going to be a guitar album, a good, you know, like acoustic slash electric songs, probably a, an EP of about the, well, no, probably be an album because I have all these songs that I haven't recorded yet. And so that's my next musical project. And then um, I'm streaming on some Thursdays, Thursday slash Fridays, like this, right, this time frame. For instance, right after this show or sometime around the my old uh, time slot. And then uh, Wednesdays, I'm going to be doing an indie live in the uh, EU time slot again. So I'm back streaming. I'd like to get on some kind of a light weekly streaming uh, you know, schedule. And then I'm still continuing to do short videos to promote my channel like... Uh, reels and shorts and all of those verticals and things using ai just to kind of get my channel uh how to how to app on ios 
No, that not that channel. The uh, homegrown <laughs> indie live, homegrown indie live channel. Back up to speed, and um, you know, get it all subbed up if you haven't been over there. And uh, yeah, I'm just you know going to be back around. I'm pr- I'm not going to be able to do streaming with the energy that Metalhead Hippie does. Man, that dude is an oh, amazing. No, it's so energetic. He sits in that chair for six hours. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> Jay. No. I watched his show the other day when J- Rody's Jam Cave was on there. It was a great show. They, they jammed live. Yeah. Hey, oh baby, that's some hot stuff. I like it. I like it, you know. So, but I mean, uh, hats off to Chef and you and Thomas and everybody for doing like daily or weekly content that we can count on as viewers for the community, you know. And it's 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 important for the community to be able to have something instead of you know just like. Some communities they're just a bunch, just a chat room. That's all it is, mm-hmm. you know, or something like that. What about your memoirs, Ron? Okay, so I have uh, written in a fair amount of detail the first part of my memoir, which brings me up to high school graduation, and. Uh, I started with my grandparents' generation about where we were from because this book is, you know, not only not only for the general public, but also for my descendants, you know, to know what happened with me. So I wrote all the way up until I graduated from high school. I always am uh, accentuating the creative part of me when I write the book as I go through. And then, uh, you know, like I said, I'm up to some of uh, my first romantic relationships. And you got to think, you know, when you write a memoir, all of the things that you haven't thought about for years come back. And then so I'm just trying to decide whether I'm going to put that romantic stuff in or just barely mention it and go on to... (laughs) Learning Vietnamese and being in the Air Force, you know, because that's when it starts to get really fast and furious. But some of that stuff is fun, but I didn't want to offend anybody. And, you know, if I actually yeah. wrote it all, I actually wrote it all, you know. <laughs> so, but the book's going on. It's not going to be out any time soon, you yeah. know. I had it online there for a while, but then, you know, I, it changed. It's edited so often I took it off of when I had my Patreon going. It's better so, keep it offline. Hell yeah. I think. Uh, now, folks, if you want to go back and find out more of Ron's backstory, go back and because this is a rewind interview where we bring back a guest from way back in the day. And Ron was my second interview, episode 13 of this show. We are up to what, episode 1070 something. So, you know, <laughs> there's been a lot of water under the bridge. But if you go back and watch that interview, you'll find out a lot about Ron's backstory, uh, working, you know, um, Re- recovering missing POWs and, you know, it, it's an amazing story. But we didn't need to cover it today because it was all in that interview. So go back right. and watch that and find out more. The last question, and as always, links are in the description to all of Ron's stuff. Go click, go subscribe, go add, go download, go buy all the music that you can because he's amazing. But the last question we ask on this show is not... The usual one, but it is, Ron, if you were on a desert island, stuck all alone, and you didn't have a soccer ball to have sex with, which album would you want with you to get you through those lonely nights? The Monkey's first album. (laughs) I did not expect that. Why? Hey, man, every song on there, even though they didn't write them, (laughs) <laughs> oh, the the studio musicians on that were uh, gone. No, they were. What was the uh, what, what was the, that group that the, they always played? It's not this like this the Sledgehammer or something like that. It's like this group of girl uh, guys with this female bass player. The uh, God bless America. I can't think of what. I'm what simply the, irresistible, dude. Is that anyway? Oh, no, so here's the deal. What's his name? Is that who you're talking about? The Simply Irresistible guy? Uh, With the girls playing instruments? 
James Burton was in oh. it. And... <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, the Wrecking Crew. All the right, Wrecking, the wrecking crew. crew. All right. Bro, those guys. So that was really who helped helped them play that album. Great guitars in all of them. A lot of bluesy stuff. Same kind of music that the Beatles were doing. But I had this album before I had any Beatles album. And there were the two guys who wrote all the songs for him. I forgot what the what it was. But it was a totally like Hollywood produced kind of a thing. But the songs were all great, I swear to God. Blues songs, rock songs, and pop songs. And if I had to live on a desert island and only I had one album, that would be it. The Monkey's first album. Awesome. Well, we've got enough time to just get your opinion just very quickly on this. The Beatles dropped their brand new, their last song last night. I've heard mm -hmm. it. You've heard it. What's your take? I think it is one of the most poignant things that they've ever done. I mean. I cried. John's vocal and, um, well, obviously John's vocal is the, the main thing yeah. that they were able to bring it out with technology. But then of course, Paul and they ensured that George, because they had jammed on that song before they, they just didn't release it yet. Well, that, that slide guitar bit in there, that was actually um, Paul playing that. It was Paul kind of emulating George. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so it, that they considered, great. they considered George to have been in it. Well, you know, sometimes even in the Beatles, George wasn't on every song. John wasn't exactly. on every song. So, I mean, so, you know, uh, so I thought that it was a really great song, a sad song by, by it John. Was sad. It was very I thought, sad. I felt um, it heartwarming that Yoko and Paul and Ringo were able to get that together, you know, because there was a lot of animosity and I felt so, crestfallen after what happened to the Beatles in a way, because there was a lot of nasty things get said and everything. And uh, so less left a bad taste in my mouth. I was a huge Beatles fan. Still am. Same. But then, but then, you know, I think the way Paul's handled it over the years and, you know, Yoko and they haven't had any fights or anything. So anyway, I thought it was a wonderful song and I think everybody should go listen to it. There's a little documentary that's actually produced by the Beatles, uh, about 12 minutes or something on it. It's on really the Beatles.com, yeah. All right. Now, folks, thank you, Ron, so much for spending time with you, getting up so early and doing this. We love you lots. Thank you, everybody in the chat, for hanging out. Please, I'm going to bounce you over to my premiere if you want to come and watch me walking around and talking about trying to improve my health and stuff like that. And the music that's on it is Joe and Barry Glenn. Please stick around. I'll dump you over to my premiere. We're going to go out today and how we do it on this show, this Rewind show. We go out with the song that I opened the show on the original interview. And that is I Never Came Home by Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard. I was lucky enough to sing vocals on this song. So let's just play it. Say goodbye to you all. Okay. Real people, real music. See you all later. Enjoy. We'll see you over at the premiere if you're going to join me. Thank you, Ron. Love you lots. Okay, Jay, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go. Hmm.
Thank you everybody for hanging out. Thank you to Distro Kid for sponsoring the show. Thank you to Ron Ward. Thank you everybody in the chat. We'll see you over at my premiere very soon. <laughs>